Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure this afternoon to share with you um, the talk that I have here with the title, Palm Oil Processing, Utilization and Nutrition. Presentation outlines. I'll give a very brief overview of the place in oil palm industry, introduction to palm oil processing, nutritional attributes of palm oil, palm oil for food and non-food applications before I make a brief conclusion. Okay, overview of the uh, Malaysian oil palm industry. Okay, the Malaysian oil palm industry has experienced significant growth since the crop was introduced into the country from West Africa in the late 19, uh, 1870s. Now, the oil palm species, commercially planted species, is known as Elisgidesis, originally planted as an ornamental plant. Since then, it has proven to be one of the greatest success stories of the Malaysian economy as a commercial plant. Now, this slide shows the uh, uh, oil palm, which is the most uh, product, uh, productive oil crop. This is the uh, slide showing the uh, harvester, harvesting the oil palm fresh fruit bunch. Um, this is very young palm. Uh, when the palm grows older, um, the, it also increases in height. So every time when you uh, remove a fresh fruit bunch, normally you remove, remove a prong. Now this slide shows the uh, oil palm fruits. Um, this is called the fresh fruit bunch. So each bunch weighs about 15 to 25 kilograms, consisting of about 1,000 to 3,000 individual seedless, uh, fruitless. So the oil, as you can see, is very unique oil palm. It contains two types of oil. From the mesu palm, we can get the crude palm oil. And from the kernel, you have got the kernel oil. So both crude palm oil and kernel oil, they are physically, chemically, and physiologically different. Performance of the Malaysian oil palm industry. Now the oil palm industry in Malaysia continues to contribute significantly to the Malaysian economic development and foreign export earnings. This slide shows the world production of palm oil, the year 2012. As you can see, total production, 53.67 million tons, and uh, Malaysia's contribution is about 35%. In terms of export, Malaysia and Indonesia, these are the two major exports of palm oil. So last year, um, the export um, Malaysia figure is 43.1%. Uh, now, this slide shows the uh, oil palm planted area as well as the crude palm oil production. Now, the oil palm planted area expanded from 3.38 million hectares in 2000 to 5.08 million hectares in 2012, while the annual production of crude palm oil in Malaysia increased from 0.09 million tons in the 1960s to 18.79 million tons in 2012. As we can see from the chart, the total planted area for oil palm in Malaysia is plateauing, and any increase in palm oil production must come from increased productivity. So, as our um, honourable minister mentioned, Malaysia we still have more than 50 percent of the land under forest cover. So um, one of our R&D focus is to increase productivity. At the moment, the national average yield of palm in the country is about four tons per hectare per year. And we are, through various innovative R&D, we hope to achieve about six tons per hectare per year by 2020 with now increasing much land area. Okay, this slide shows the uh, oil palm, uh, the most productive oil crop. Now, oil palm is the most productive oil-bearing plant species known. Oil palm contributes 42.3% of total vegetable oil production and occupies only 8.3% of the total area planted with respect to the three major crops. So, it mean occupies 10 times the cultivated land area compared to oil palm. Oil palm requires only 0.25 hectare to produce one ton of oil as compared to red seed, about 1.36 hectare, and soya bean, 2.48 hectare. As such, oil palm uses land more efficiently than any other vegetable oil crops. 
This is the uh, palm oil exports to major destinations. Over the years, the Blazing Palm Oil has been exported to more than 150 countries worldwide, and the commodity has gained worldwide acceptance due to its versatility in both food and non-food applications, as well as its competitive price. Processes of palm oil, just a quick look. This is an overview of the oil palm supply chain, from the plantation to the mill, the milling and then refining, then uh, you have the transportation, so um, bulking installation and export. So from the refinery, the refined palm products either reach the consumers, customer consumers, or they can be exported in bulk to overseas. Okay, this is the palm oil inspection. As I already mentioned, oil palm is very unique. It's a very, uh, only vegetable uh, crop that contains two types, produce two types of oil. From the mesocarp is the crude palm oil, and uh, in the uh, refining, uh, in the refinery, through the refining process, you get the RPD palm oil. Uh, palm oil is semi-solid at ambient temperature or room temperature of 30 degrees centigrade. Through fractionation, you can get the liquid fraction, known as uh, palm oli, and the solid fraction, known as the palm theory. So uh, we have another type of oil here, palm kernel oil. So uh, through the refining process, you get the RBD, refined, rich and to old rice, palm kernel oil, and through fractionation, you get the kernel oli and kernel theory. This slide shows the fatty acid composition of palm oil versus palm kernel oil. As you could see from the palm oil, um, the major fatty acid composition is the uh, C60, um, uh, palmitic acid, and also it contains high oleic acid like the uh, um, uh, oric oil. So actually palm oil is uh, uh, sem semi-solid, containing about 50% of saturated fatty acid and 50% uh, of unsaturated fatty acid. But it behaves nutritionally more like unsaturated oil. Now for the palm kernel oil, it's high in C12, oleic oil. So it's a good material for oleochemical applications. This slide shows the composition of crude palm oil. So in crude palm oil, contains the oil is uh, triglyceride, no more than 90% triglyceride, two to 7% dye, less than 1% uh, monoglyceride. Free fatty acid is three to 5%. This is the crude palm oil. But after refining, the RBD palm oil contains less than 0.1% fatty acid. Minor components is only 1% is the phytonutrients such as vitamin E, carotenes. It contributes a lot to the nutritional attributes of palm oil. Now, process pro diagram of conventional palm oil mill. Uh, you have the fresh food bunch sent to the mill, go through the sterilization process, digestion, screw press. So you get the oil from palm oil, but you also separate the kernel for the kernel oil crushing for the kernel oil. And uh, in the middle, of course, you produce some effluent. But later on, I'll show you even you can turn all these effluent into useful products. So this is a, a conventional palm oil process. But at Malaysia Palm Oil Board, together with the uh, uh, in, uh, industry partner, CPIB, uh, will come up with an uh, innovation on the milling process that is a continuous sterilization. We have built this uh, continuous sterilization plant uh, over uh, more than 60 plants have been built, so it's more efficient and more cost effective. Now, refining process. From the crude palm oil, you send the oil to the refinery, go through this uh, degumming, bleaching, the acidification, and the authorization, you get the RB palm oil. Now, this is a physical refining process without the use of any solvent, so it's very environmentally friendly. So, uh, from the uh, palm oil, you go through, again, dry fractionation without involving solvent. You can uh, separate the uh, uh, palm oil into oli, liquid, and the steering, the solid fraction. So um, depending on the customer's requirement, you can have a whole range of products uh, with the IB of uh, uh, ionic value of, uh, I mean, different values. Now, nutritional attributes of palm oil. I'd just like to quickly to run through this one. A break of the nutritional attributes. The nutritional values and the versatility of palm oil are renowned worldwide, especially in the edible sector. 
Additionally, there is now increasing awareness of the advantages of palm oil from the health perspective. This may be another major factor contributing towards the growing demand for palm oil. Just now you have heard uh, some of these uh, points from uh, Sri Dr. Yusuf's uh, uh, talk. Now, uh, for the food and nutritional research, using a carefully evolved research strategy in Malaysian palm oil board, uh, we have focused its resources through multi prong nutrition trials in animals and humans to prove the nutritional uh, worthiness of palm oil and its products. Now, these studies have yielded results that not only demonstrate the nutritional adequacy of palm oil and its products, but have also caused transitions in the signs of edible oil sympathy as an effect on coronary heart disease. Now, um, great strides have been made over the last 25 years in elucidating a number of the health benefits of palm oil and its fractions. So this has resulted in more than 200 publications in high-impact peer-reviewed journals and also a collaborative project undertaken at both local and international centers of excellence, as can be seen in this uh, slide. Now, this slide shows the regional di distribution and types of research projects at the various centers of excellence worldwide ca uh, carry out research on CHD, carcinogenesis, um, and others. Now, the outcomes of palm oil nutritional research, Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, and World Health Organization have endorsed palm oil as meeting food standards under the Cortex Alimentarius Commission um, program. Now, as a balanced vegetable oil, palm oil is a source of energy. It is free of cholesterol and trans fatty acids and packed with health-inducing carotenoids, the pro-vitamin A and vitamin E. Palm oil contains almost equal amounts of unsaturated and saturated fats. In the body, it behaves more like a monounsaturated fat and has no adverse impact on cholesterol levels. As can be seen from the following slides, palm oil, that is the liquid fraction, of palm oil and olive oil have similar beneficial effects on blood cholesterol. Olive oil is always a reference oil by the uh, medical and paramedical uh, professions that it is a good oil. So palm oil has got the uh, same effect in terms of beneficial effects in terms of blood cholesterol studies. This is another study to show that uh, oil and olive oil have similar beneficial effects on blood cholesterol. And then uh, compared to sunflower seed oil, palm oil is also comparable in terms of lipid profile. That's, that's why the palm oil does not really behave like a saturated fat. Now this is uh, oil comparable with groundnut oil on lipid profile. The stand that in uh, Myanmar, you grow a lot of uh, sesame oil, groundnut oil. So uh, palm oil is uh, comparable, really good on lipid profile. Okay, next I would like to share with you is on the palm phytonutrients. Just now I mentioned that it only contain, palm oil only contains 1% of phytonutrients, but it contributes significantly to the nutritional attributes of palm oil. So the major ones are the vitamin E and the carotenoids. The others like squalene, lecithin, coenzyme Q10, phytosterol, they are also a present in palm. Now, tocotrienols, you hear more about it this evening. Tocotrienols, Antioxidant properties, cholesterol lowering properties, anti cancer, neuroprotective um, uh, properties, also um, in the uh, help in the immune regulation. Now, this slide shows the vitamin E content in fats and oils. As you can see, uh, palm oil is unique because this is the uh, one of the uh, the other the other uh, rice bran oil may contain uh, some uh, tocotrienols. But uh, palm oil contains uh, quite a lot of uh, tocotrienols. The difference between tocotrienols and tocopherol, when you talk about vitamin E, it's mainly uh, referring to tocopherol, alpha tocopherol. So in palm oil, it's unique because uh, uh, the major tocos are tocotrienols, 70 to 80%. The nutritional attributes are already uh, shown just now on the, my previous slides. So this is the uh, vitamin E content in the uh, various uh, vegetable oils and fats, but in palm, is mainly tocotrienols. Now, these are commercial products. You can see it. 
um, from the trolley. This is uh, um, from uh, uh, Sun Lab, um, produced using NOV technology. Topovi is from the uh, Ovi company. So these are the two commercial products made from the palm palm sources. Another phytonutrients that I like to uh, elaborate here is carotenoids or carotenes. It's a pro-vitamin A solution to vitamin A deficiency. It's got anti-cancer effects on certain types of cancer, strong antioxidants, stimulation to the, of the immune system, cardiovascular protection, prevention of cataract, and actually um, also help to prevent xerotemia, that is the night blindness diseases. This is uh, one of the products. Uh, um, this is the uh, uh, red palm oil, so um, contains uh, a lot of carotenes as well as tocotrienols. This is the only vegetable oils that contain both carotenes and vitamin E, so suitable for various applications. So um, this slide is quite interesting, benefits of the uh, red palm oil, carotene red palm oil. Now I'd just like to elaborate here. Now in South Africa, uh, South Africa, in case we conducted some study here, yeah, where malnutrition is prevalent in school children, this uh, pectoid spot is one of the signs of vitamin A deficiency in children. So um, these have been formulated in viscous, the red palm oil, carotene red palm oil, were made from the red palm stearin, uh, and fed to South African children who had low vitamin A. So the viscous containing red palm oil were able to increase the vitamin A levels in the children, and the problem with night blindness was eradicated after five months of intervention. Now another study is uh, in uh, another study actually is done in India, demonstrated that the preschool schoolers, if they consume five mil of red palm oil per day, had marked improvement in their serum beta carotene levels. Um, so this one shows that uh, the other study also conducted in uh, um, in uh, India, just now one is in the National Institute of Nutrition in Hyderabad, another one is in the India, Habil Tadu State, and also show that uh, the uptake of uh, all this uh, 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 red palm oil as a source of vitamin A, so it helps to uh, eradicate some of these uh, vitamin A deficiency problems that is very common in children in uh, uh, um, underdeveloped countries or developing countries. Okay, applications of red palm oil, as you can see from this table, can uh, use it for various applications. Um, because it's red in color, so the theory, you can naturally just use it in margarine formulation. Okay, next one. This is on the phenolics. Uh, what happened here is uh, just now what I show you is the carotene vitamin E that is fat soluble present in palm oil. And POB, we also have found that in the water soluble fractions, in the milling process, contains a lot of phenolics. When you take tea, you have a lot of these uh, phenolics, antioxidants. So this uh, slide shows that some of the studies conducted uh, worldwide uh, about the biological activities of oil palm phenolics. All those marked in green are already confirmed in nutritional attributes. The others are ongoing. So these are some of the uh, nutritional attributes contributing from the palm uh, uh, phytonutrients. Next, I would like to share with you is on uh, palm oil for food applications. Now, advantage of palm oil in food applications, high nutritional value, GMO free, free of trans fatty acid, cholesterol free, competitive price, highly uh, stable, and also contain antioxidant properties. Now this slide shows the traditional foods that you can use for palm oil or palm oil fractions. Cooking oil, industrial flying oil, margarine, shortening, vegetable ghee, confectioning fats, ice cream, filled milk, non-dairy food products, etc. All these contains as a source of vitamin E, some with vitamin A. Now palm oil has a cooking oil, good stability, oxidative stability, long shelf life, excellent thermal stability, um, most other vegetable oil need to be partially hydrogenated to increase stability. But palm oil, you don't need to, you just fracture the eat. The solid fraction is the natural hard fat for various applications. Therefore, palm oil is trans free because when you do hydrogenation, you'll produce a, a trans fatty acid, which is not desirable. Okay, now trans fat, just a few points here. 
Plant fatty acid contributes to increased risk of cardiovascular diseases, WHO, FAO, recommendation, plant fatty acid should be limited to less than 1% of total di daily energy in human diet. In most European countries and North America, 2% plant fatty acid limit is uh, mentioned in dietary oils and fats. That's why many countries, uh, many companies, they move away from all these plant fat and try to use other sources such as palm. Now, chronic palm oil, palm oil study, palm oil versus trans fat. Trans fat increased total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, and lipoprotein A. This is uh, something that we don't want, huh? but it increased if you compare to the oil study, and decreased HDL cholesterol. Yeah. We want the HDL cholesterol. So in this study, it shows that palm oil is definitely um, good as compared to those containing trans fats. Okay, now this is the uh, palm oil based trans free margarine formulations. You can have uh, various types of uh, uh, margarine formulation. This morning, you just see the launch of one type of uh, margarine from uh, Galda. So these are the various uh, trans fat free margarine formulations. Okay, palm oil in ghee substitute. Now, vegetable oil ghee or vanaspati was developed for certain markets in India and other parts of the East due to the shortage of butter fat or ghee. It has the same coarse granular appearance that is natural and similar to butter fat ghee. This one, uh, palm oil in dairy product substitute. So, uh, palm oil is becoming a great choice in non dairy food products. It's fatty acid composition leads to its outstanding stability and good physical and nutritional properties. This is the special effects, confectionary effects. So um, application of palm oil in this uh, specialty and confectionary effects. Palm oil and then uh, palm kernel oil are suitable to be used as raw material to produce all this. Cocoa butter substitute, cooked things, cream filling ice cream, frosting, caramels, toffees and porches. Other food applications, palm-based coconut milk has got a better long-term stability compared to coconut uh, milk. Also, uh, palm oil, you can formulate it in uh, mayonnaise and salad dressing. Other food applications, these are the palm-based cheese. So, uh, palm oil and palm kernel oil fractions can substitute milk fat in cheese formulation. Other food application, palm-based ice cream. Suitable due to its narrow plastic range with high solid at low temperature. So, uh, as you can see, this slide shows that application of uh, palm oil in various foods and baking sectors. Okay, the next uh, um, uh, areas that I would like to touch on briefly is on the palm oil for non food applications. About 85% of palm oil used in food, uh, leaving behind about 15% for the non food applications. So this is on the uh, palm oil oleochemicals, downstream products. You can use this uh, palm oil as the, uh, start the, uh, as a, uh, uh, in the uh, formulation, huh? in detergent cleaning products. Normally, um, some of these active materials come from petroleum-based, but uh, now it can, uh, it can come from palm-based, which is renewable and biodegradable, more environmentally friendly, Palm oil uh, or palm kernel oil, they can also use in uh, various personal care products formulation, uh, in soap formulation. I know that quite a lot of palm oil are con uh, imported to uh, Myanmar. We use it uh, in the soap, soap chip, uh, soap formulation. So this is another type, transparent soap. Now uh, polyols, polyurethanes, this is very interesting. Polyurethane is formed by reacting polyols with the uh, isocyanides in the presence of uh, suitable catalysts and additives. It is a unique material that offers the elasticity of rubber combined with the toughness and durability of a metal. So palm-based polyurethane are generally more biodegradable than petroleum-based polyurethane. Another group of products, environmentally friendly palm-based products using grease, palm-based grease with great Agrochemicals, you can use it to uh, substitute a lot of petroleum-based solvent and also use in palm-based printing ink. So moving on, another area of non-food application is on the palm biofuel. 
So um, this one, uh, Malaysia, uh, has undertaken the R&D on palm-based biofuel since 1981. This is a homegrown palm biodiesel technology. So um, we have uh, uh, licensed our technology to um, Lipocam as well as uh, Oitech to build the palm for uh, Malaysia, those, for those who are interested. So beside Malaysia, we also have uh, built a plant in Thailand as well as in uh, Korea. Now, uh, in Malaysia, now we are implementing the B5 program. B5 means 5% biodiesel, 95% uh, petroleum diesel. It, sh it would be nationwide implementation by July 1st, 2014. Now, uh, certain states in Malaysia is uh, mandatory using the B5. These are the two grades of biodiesel that we can produce, summer grade, 15 degrees centigrade, and the winter grade. Again, this is the uh, NPOB technologies. So um, now the palm biodiesel, you can use it either in temperate country or tropical country or temperate countries. Now these are just some of the plants that we have in Malaysia. Okay, moving on, palm oil for non-oil biomass applications. This is a very interesting slide, as you can see. If you look at the whole oil palm tree, 10% only oil, but wait, actually 90% are biomass. So in the field, we have the frond, and uh, when you do replanting, you have the trunk. So oil palm frond, palm, fresh fruit bunch, when you harvest the uh, oil palm fruit, go to the mill. So you have, uh, after uh, extracting the oil, you have the uh, empty fruit bunch, shell, fiber, and so forth. And um, all these have got a lot of applications. Now, when we look at palm biomass, we can turn it into useful application. One of them, what we call, is the second generation biofuels. In other words, the biofuels come from non food sources. Second generation biofuel. You can um, use the biomass to produce a syn gas, uh, bio oil, um, palm bio ethanol, and as well as other uh, synthetic diesel. So in Malaysia, most of these are still at the current plant stage. Okay, now palm oil meal effluent based biogas plant huh? can turn biomass, uh, bio, uh, the effluent into useful product. In Malaysia, sustainability is the key to the continued success of Malaysia's driving palm oil industry. Currently, there is a steady trend among palm oil operators to advocate sustainability through optimal usage of natural resources and their biomass waste products. Some of the mills in Malaysia have palm oil meal effluent ponds which can be used to capture biogas, which is then scrubbed to generate clean biogas, which contains about 65% methane and 35% carbon dioxide. And we turn it into um, uh, power, such as uh, we use it uh, connecting to the grid for electricity and power. So moving on, um, sorry. Okay, now another applications of the uh, palm biomass. This is uh, beside the energy, you can turn biomass into various products such as the uh, uh, biocomposite product, pulp and paper, um, other products such as uh, medium density fiber board, plywood, sawn lumber. Um, this, a lot of these are already in commercial exploitation. Other products, I palm part, carbon products, fine chemicals. You can extract a lot of fine chemicals from palm biomass. This is another industry altogether. So um, the last topic before I conclude is quickly to share with you the uh, sustainability. Now in Malaysia, our goal in the oil palm industry is to have a balanced development in social, economic and environmental aspects. We believe these pillars can coexist in harmony. So um, in achieving this holistic approach, MPOB has developed and launched code of practices along the oil palm supply chain to ensure sustainable development of Malaysian oil palm industry. Cost of practice certification was introduced in 2007. It is a system tool for food safety, quality assurance, and environmental protection and sustenance. Code of practice is set to enhance the sustainable practices of the Malaysian palm oil industry to meet the demands of an increasingly environment environment commercial market. This consists of seven sectors in the industry as shown in the slide. Benefits of the life cycle assessment. Okay, this one, uh, ladies and gentlemen, life cycle assessment actually is a scientific tool 
to finally find the impact on the environment of a product or a process along the life cycle of the product or process. So the LCA study is useful to identify the potential of environmental impacts associated with the production of the product and to gauge its greenhouse gas emissions. It can be used to suggest mitigation measures to reduce or overcome the environmental hotspots. Therefore, life cycle assessment study is able to contribute to sustainable development of the oil palm industry. This slide shows the uh, life cycle assessment study. Now uh, we have completed, and POB have completed a full life cycle assessment study of the uh, palm oil supply chain, and this uh, covers the upstream and downstream as processes as well as some of the finished products. So all these have been published in the International Peer Review Journal. This slide shows the GHG emissions of major vegetable oils. Uh, based on the MPOB life cycle assessment study, the GHG emission of refined palm oil is lower as compared to refined rapeseed and soybean oils. The GHG emission can be even lower if biogas is captured at the palm oil mills. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, palm oil is a very important food source providing needed energy to the world population. It has a wide range of applications in the food industry without the presence of trans fat. The unique fatty acid composition of palm oil makes it a nutritious yet functional oil in various food applications. Palm oil behaves like unsaturated oils, example olive oil, sunflower oil and coconut oil. Evidence has been obtained to suggest that dietary palm oil reduces the risk parameters in cardiovascular diseases. The phytonutrients are additional health benefits in palm oil. Now, the unique composition of palm oil, as well as palm kernel oil, also offers potential for use in non-food applications. The steady supply of quality Malaysian palm oil will help meet the increasing global demand for oils and fats. Ladies and gentlemen, before I conclude, I'd like to invite all of you to attend our PIPOP, this uh, international conference, uh, once in two years. This year will be held in uh, Kuala Lumpur. Every time we hold it in Kuala Lumpur, 19 to 21st November, you can log in to have more information. But um, this is normally attended by about 2,000 uh, participants worldwide. And uh, before I conclude, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to also share with you that Malaysian Palm Oil Board also provides technical advisory services for products development and transfer of technology. In addition, we, are pro we also provide training courses such as palm-based margarine production and palm oil familiarization program. This can be part of the collaborative project between MPOB and interested parties in Myanmar. So we welcome you to Malaysia. With that, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.